Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise you, the Lord. He is worthy to be praised. Good evening. Good evening, Kingdom Purpose TV. This is Conversations with Gospel Recording Music Artists. And you know what? I'm going to have to change that title because I'm going to be talking to folks in, in the world of uh, in the, uh, for the kingdom. And they ain't necessarily got to be a gospel recording music artist, but that's what it is for tonight. And, um, and, and you know what? I'm Brother Servant Leader. That's right. That's what I go by. Arthur L. Weathersby out of Wilmington, Delaware. And I have someone with with us tonight that you're gonna y'all you're gonna be really really impressed by this person not because of just who they are but who they represent um i'm gonna let her introduce herself to you hi i'm karen orlando from long island new york it's so good to be with you thank you so much for having me on the show well you're quite welcome i uh, i can tell you guys how i came in uh in contact with um pastor karen orlando is i saw videos on my feed um, of her ministering the word of God. And then I also saw her singing and I said, I wonder if she's a singer. Then I also, um, there was a, a communique going back and forth with somebody that we both know, um, elder Dr. Lonnie, Lonnie Hunter. Oh, and then, and then I found out we had that kind of a connection. So we're going to be talking about some stuff y'all. Uh, yeah. cause uh, one thing I can tell you, we, 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 we're going to get to the music. I'm going to get the music out the way first. And then we're going to talk about some other stuff. All right, um, um, Pastor, tell us about your music background and yeah, just tell us about it. Well, actually, I, I have no, um, no musical background. I had no natural talent at all. Um, I got saved when I was 14 years old and I was completely tone deaf. Uh, my family had gone to a service at the Catholic Church down the block. Funny story how all that come, but we'll, we'll talk about that another time. But I had asked Jesus into my heart. And, you know, I didn't know anything about ministry. I just I just found out, you know, like that God wanted a relationship with me and not just religion. Because coming out of, you know, Catholicism, it was like the light bulb turned on. Like, wow, I can really talk to God. He's He's in my heart. He's alive, you know. It was, it was so awesome. And, you know, I, um, at, at that time when I was, a, when I was a young girl, I, I couldn't sing. I was completely tone deaf. And what I really wanted to be was a dancer. That's, I went to dancing school and, you know, I had talent for that. And that's what I really wanted to be. And one day, you know, like God does, he comes in and he just wrecks your world and he wrecks your plans. And, you know, what you, what you plan and what you want. Like so many times people will ask me, well, you know, wh what do you, what do you want? What? And I was like, I don't think it matters. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You know, it, when God, when God does something and he calls you, you know, before the fact, you, you know, before you were in your mother's womb, he Come knew on. and he spoke a word over you. And, and that word is never going to abort. That word is never going to fail. You will be what God said you would what you would be. And yeah. so at the time, you know, I, um, I was, I, I was just going about my business and the Lord began to speak to my heart. And he said to me, Karen, he goes, I want you to give up dancing. And I was like, give up dancing. This is the only thing that, that, that I'm good at, you know, like, um, I, I'm not smart. I had a lot of learning disabilities and, and dancing and it did not make sense. And you know, the Lord just kept tugging and tugging and tugging at my heart to do this. And I really just kept pushing it away. And one day I'm out in the backyard and my mom came out and she said to me, Karen, she said, I've got something to tell you that the Lord told me that I don't think you're going to like very much. And I looked at her and I said, mom, I said, I know he wants me to give up dancing. And she looked at me and she said, what? How did you know? And I said, because he's been dealing with me. He's been dealing with me. He's been telling me. And, and I said, Okay, God, I said, whatever you want. I don't, I don't understand it. I don't understand what you, what you're, what, why you're doing this. Because here's the thing. He never told me that what he was going to do after I gave up the dancing. That's right. That's right. You know, he, God only gives you the pieces that you need to know in the moment that you need to know it. That's it. He doesn't lay the whole plan out. He gets you to say yes. And then you find out. So, um, <laughs> But the thing, the thing that he said to me, he said, um, he says, I never take away anything without replacing it with something greater. And That's obedience right. is better than sacrifice. You know, it was you know. that night that I was standing in my bedroom and all of a sudden I opened up my mouth and I began to sing. 
And my mom came and she knocked on the door. She said, turn the radio off. And I said, mom, it's not the radio. It's me. And she opened up the door and she said, what? And I started to sing. Well, she could not believe what she was hearing because they made fun of me. Like I, you know, like I, I, I couldn't match pitch. And sure enough, you know, brought me downstairs and, and everybody, everybody was just shocked, you know? So at the time, and again, this is like a long story, but at the time, my dad, um, he was going to Bible school because um, he had he had suffered a massive heart attack and he no longer worked and God led him to go to Bible school. And again, all of this was so abstract, like n- none of the pieces, nothing made sense. There was like a piece here and a piece there. And so when he was going to Bible school, as he graduated, so many of the people that graduated were starting their churches. And so they would ask for you know me to come in and sing. And, and just like that, that's how the ministry um, was birthed, you know, when I was 14 years old and I've been in full-time ministry since I'm 14 and I'm 54 years old now. And it's, it's been 40 years of, um, you know, God's just opened up doors and it, and it started out with me singing, you know, and and recording records and and doing songs and stuff like that. And it was wonderful. But then later on, God said to me when I was about 22, he said, the day will come when your singing will be secondary to your speaking because I Mm -hmm. have and That's so right. it's, been, it's just been an incredible journey, what, what God has done. Well, you know what? I'm going to say this. I'm sitting here listening to you, and I have listened, I have watched you doing ministry in, 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 in what you do on Facebook and live. And one of the things that, that's, that I picked up was that where you come from and how you, uh, things that you outlay, I, I, it resonates with me. Because mm. when you went to Jeremiah 1 5, that's one of my favorites. Yeah, because because before we were formed in our mother's womb, yeah. God already had he predestined, predetermined, foreordains what we're to do. Yes. And and the way you said about how God lays things out in the stage, I try to tell people, God says, first off, if I well, if he tried to lay it out to it all at once, it would it would explode our minds. Couldn't we, have fi- we couldn't. We have finite minds with right. ability to hold finite information with an infinite God with infinite. It would it would blow our minds. And then- it, almost, it almost feels like God like hoodwinks you into it. You know what I mean? Like he tricks you into it because he knows he knows if he showed you the whole vision that you'd be so overwhelmed. Oh, be like, yes, no way. Can't do this. So he That's gets right. to say yes. Yes. You no, know? and you say, okay, yes, Lord, I, I'll I'll do this. Is if this is what you want, and then once you give him your yes, then he's like, okay, we're gonna, you know, get in the car, baby. We're we're, we're rolling now, and and it That's really right. is such a journey. But when you are truly called to do it, and and that's yeah. something that people need to understand, you know, when when God speaks something that when He said His word says that His word is like seed. Yeah. And it doesn't return void. So that's when right. Speaks to you. It's it's like you you literally get impregnated. You get knocked up. You get knocked <laughs> up with his plan and his purpose, and nothing is going to abort it. So that's right. you, know, you go through life, and the enemy and people, you know, try to discourage you and start to say, you know, you can't do this, and you can't do that. You're not the right color. You're not the right weight. You're not the right age. You know, you're a woman. They try to put you in this box. And God says, I'm I'm too big to live in a box. And all that I've created is too big to live in a box. That's right. It's time to get out of the box. And, you know, when you say yes to God, it, it's like he just takes a hold of stuff and he puts that word in you that <laughs> what comes against you. And, and, you know, and it gets hard. You know, yeah. people don't want to talk about the struggle. They want to they want to just talk about, you know, oh, I got this victory and I did this and I did that. And God just made a way. But there's a struggle. Absolutely. You know, when when God when God, you know, tags you and he says, you're it. There's there's a struggle. There's there's a fight. You know, and so many times I hear people say, you know, well, if it's God, it just it's easy. And, it uh... just, and I say no way, because opposition is is is. Opposition is confirmation of the mission. That's right. And and, and, uh, and as many times as you want to give up, when when you have the true word of the Lord and God has put his purpose inside of you, it's the word that gets you up. There have been right. so many times that said, you know what? I'm done. I quit. This is over. 
You know what? And while I'm doing it, I'm getting dressed and I'm going out the door, you know, or I'm getting on Facebook and I'm and I'm doing it, you know, and, right. it, it's, and so many people, they look at you. And when you've been faithful and you've been steadfast because of this word, they think you're nuts. They're oh, like, I know. Why are you bothering doing this? What is, what good is this? Who's watching you? Who's doing this? And, but God, I'm telling you, he does not work um, quickly, but he does work suddenly. That's right. And, and you said several things. Uh, one of the things that's important is that you have to be obedient because mm. God does not. And he's not going to. First off, you have God gives us he deals with us in stages. Yes. He will give us something that we can handle at the stage that we're at. Once we've done what we need to do to understand that we got it, we know how we got it, we know we know who to give the credit to, and then he's ready to move us because then you've grown. Mm. He does not give anything to you until you grow in him. Amen. And it's, it's, I equate it to just like being in school. When you start out in first grade, you're going through the year, you're learning. And mm -hmm. at the end of the year, you're taking tests during the year, which is the trials and the struggles and things that we go through in life. And at the end of the year, you have a final exam. Now, if once you pass that final exam, you're promoted to the second grade. Now, you take what you learned in the first grade, but in the second grade, you're going to go greater because there's greater information that you have to uh, receive and learn. And that's what God does to us with, with how he um, brings us into the place that he wants us to be. Because you said something real good, too. One of the things people have to understand that there's a big difference between calling and, and a gift. Mm -hmm. your, your the calling supersedes the gift any day. Yep. Any day. And a lot of people that are artistic, they don't they don't get that in the body of Christ. They think their gift is what it's all about. No, your gifting is not no, your calling is more important to him because your calling is gonna allow you to do more of what the purpose that he has for you to do. Mm -hmm. And I and I yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Because your calling is what he's called you to do. And you are anointed to do what you are called to do. Some people that's right. And they can and they can work in excellence. But here's the difference. Excellence will bring you to your feet, but anointing will bring you to your knees. Come on. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's real it's good. Anointing. So a lot of people, you know, they have a gift and it's wonderful and we celebrate the gift and, and, and it's great. But that gift doesn't doesn't can't can't change lives. But when nope. God calls you to do something, he anoints you. And it's that anointing that yes. brings the change. See, I always pray like every time that I speak or I sing or anytime I, I, God gives me a platform to minister. My, my prayer is always like, Lord, please don't let one person leave the way they came in. That's right. Let, that's, them, that's let them be changed. Let them feel your presence. Let them feel the anointing because, you know, it's it's the anointing. And it's and again, too, you can be very gifted, but yet have no fruit in your life. That's right. That's right. That's important right there. Yeah. You know, everybody, everybody's always impressed with the gifts of the spirit. I want the gifts. I want to prophesy. I want to heal. I want to do this. I want to do that. But the, it's the fruits because your gift will make room, but your character will keep you. So it's the fruits that you develop that that's <laughs> going to give life to those gifts and use those gifts for God's glory and not your flesh. I'm so glad you said that. I did a message some while, a while several years ago about your gift and your and your character. Your character will take you from earth to glory. Mm -hmm. That's what your character will do. Yes. Your gift won't do that, but your your character will take you from earth to glory. And you know something else, um, um Pastor, is which is real good that I'm I'm really enjoying this conversation because I knew from the time that I saw your videos that we had this kindred spirit about mm -hmm. understanding of the word and how to do it. One of the things that disturbs me, and I know I, you, you'll probably say something about this as well. When we go into our churches today and, and you're talking about the anointing, what the anointing does and how it, how it uh, has an impact on people. When we go in our churches today. I'm not saying all of them, but there's too many of them. When I go in there, I'm 70 years old and I know what it was like because I didn't get saved till I was 43 years old. So I know what it was like to go to a, a concert to see the dramatics, the Dells, the, the Temptations, Smokey Robinson, the Miracles, and go into that environment. When I come into churches today, that's exactly what I see. I see an elaborate stage presentation. I go into the building that looks like a concert hall, mm -hmm. looks like a venue for performance. And then when you look up on the stage, 
that's exactly what you get. You got some well-rehearsed musicians that are nothing more than professional musicians. They come and carry, come into the church, carrying their instruments like they're going to a gig. Ain't nobody got no Bible. They don't attend sun, Bible study or nothing. And then all the things that go on. You have you, and I'm not going against this, but you got fan dance, you got mime, you got drama, uh, and and then several other things. And then here comes the main event. Then here, and now coming to the stage, you love them. It's your pastor, and they come out there and they get you all hyped, and they read the scripture. But after they read the scripture, then you get a, a well told fable, nothing to do with the word at all yeah. and and there's no place for healing salvation or deliverance and people just being entertained you got churches that got thirty thousand people but they ain't got no power yeah, yeah. <laughs> thirty thousand yeah. but no power no demonstrated power the holy ghost in that place yeah it's um it it's sad because today you know instead of producing ministers we're producing celebrities and, you know, and, and that, and that all leaves you empty. Yeah. You know, it, it's okay to have, you know, a goose bump here and there and you get excited. But if you walk <laughs> out of that church and you're not, and you're not changed, you know, you're, you're no closer to the Lord that, then it, it's, it's all wood, hay and stubble, you know, and I know that there's, listen, the old school and the new school, you know, yeah. we got to learn how to come together. You know, you, yeah. you have a young generation here. And listen, when, when we were young, we had our own language and we were struggling with our older generation. That's and right. there were things that my, that my you know, what, what I cut my teeth on, you know, the, my biblical foundation. And, and I'm, I'm so glad, I'm so glad that I was, I was raised that way because my foundation is strong because the winds and the rains, they came and I'm still here. Yeah. I'm still here because of that, because I was, I was taught what it was to really serve God. You know, when, when my father was raising me in ministry, mm -hmm. you know, he, um, the until the day he died, he never let me take a love offering. Wow. He never let me take a love offering. Wow. The reason, because I was so young, I was, I was so young that my father did not want me to feel like ministry was a job and that I could make money. Now mm. I understand that a, a workman is worthy of his hire. Right. But there, but I don't do ministry for money. In fact, Ooh, when I do good. my events and everything, I, I give out more than, more than I get back. <laughs> but God has always, has always provided. So, but you know, on the other hand, that doesn't mean that you can't prosper in ministry. It has to do with the heart. Why am I doing That's right. what I'm doing? That's right. That's you know, right. like the old school and the new school, we've got to learn how to come together because some of these, these new schools, you know, it is, it's all about the performance and they're missing. You don't hear about prayer. You don't hear about fasting. This, this generation, first of all, I'm sorry to say this, but they're probably, and not all, because nothing is ever always, but they're probably the most biblically illiterate. Yes. OK, because they're not discipling and, and, and <coughs> it's true that we're just, you know, we've got we've got all this greasy grace and you could do whatever you want and live. And God has forgiven you. And, you know, and, and it's just a bunch of garbage. OK, yes. Just, yes. I mean, to think that you never have to repent to God. I mean, think about it in your marriage. If you never said you're sorry to your wife, you, you'd be divorced. How does That's that right. work in relationship? So if I do something against God. Yes. You know, he's not going to hold it against me, but if I love him, I'm going to say, you know, I'm sorry. That's I'm right. sorry I did this. It, that's how relationships work. That's so right. There's a lot of there's there's just so much out of bounds, whether it's, whether it's faith and it's healing. And I get, so I, I, it bothers me, you know, when, when there are messages that are trending. Yeah. You well, know, grace isn't trending and healing. No, it's not. Trending and faith isn't trending. And we go through these cycles where that's all everybody's talking about. You know, they're right. only talking about faith or they're talking about grace. They're talk and it really is the whole gospel. It's the yeah. whole gospel. It's, that's it's, right. it's you know, it, 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 it's all in balance. And the old and the new, like, listen, you're, you're dealing with a bunch of kids that everything is sight and sound. So you do have to have something that's going to you know, pull them in and that's going to grab their attention and be, I, I think it's this, I think we need to be real. And I think yes. we need to speak to the culture and the generation and stop, you know, walking away from topics or just 
calling certain things like when you're when you're dealing with all of this, you know, the the perverseness and the twistedness and all of that, you know, you just can't scream and yell at it and things right. go away. You you got to learn how to minister to it. And you know, like a lot of these churches, there's no, you know, I've heard the arguments. There's no crosses on the wall. They're doing this. Listen, I don't care if a if a church has got a cross on the wall or not, because God has a cross to be hanging. Yeah, that, that's symbolism. He told you to pick up your cross. Cross, hey, that's now, right. That's, that's right. That's it. It's about it's about your walk. It's that's not right. about how you're presenting the gospel. It's about are you preaching the gospel? Are you that's singing right. the gospel? That's, that's why. Right. In in contemporary music today you know it's it's so hard to find some really great stuff because so much is like it's about god but it's it, you got to kind of look in the lyrics to try to find <laughs> it. you know like i grew up on i you know i cut my teeth on andre crouch you know the blood yeah. will never lose its power to god be the glory for all the great things you know bill gather because he lives i can face tomorrow blessed yeah. assurance jesus is mine like all of those songs were so birthed out of people's experience experiences with god that's why those songs still stand today yeah I don't what style you do them in you know what i mean because again it was about the heart it was about the relationship it was about you know can, can i feel god i don't care how your your church is doing stuff i just want to know when i walk in your church can i feel the holy spirit and if Amen. i feel the Holy spirit i don't care if you got pews if you got chairs if you got smoke and lights or you just got a cross if i don't feel the holy spirit i'm out of there <laughs> Amen. Want, be there. God Amen. Loves you. you know, do what you gotta do, boo boo. But I'm out. I'm out. Amen. I, I want, I want the presence of God in my life. That, that's what I'm after. You know, Praise I want God. To know God. I want to know God. I want to hear God. I want to, I want to feel His presence. I want to carry His presence. Amen. Now, I, I now y'all see how the how how she's going, right? I'm, I'm gonna have to reel her in. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I that's much. okay. That's okay. No, but that's good because that's the genuineness and realness that 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 should come forth from anybody that's a child of God, and particularly doing what we're doing as ministers of the gospel. You yeah. need to have that realness and need that passion need to show forth. So I'm not. I'm only saying that because you know we got to be time conscious here. I know. But I just love Jesus. I love talking. I love talking. I, oh, I know. I I tell. Trust me. I know. I, they they gonna know it too. That's for sure. But, you know, I'm going to go back over you something. You have a lot more words than you do. <laughs> well, no, child. <laughs> you know, I'm just I'm just being, you know, tame right here. But let me tell you, um, there's a couple of things I'm going to go back over because we got about six minutes or so. Um, you said something early on that I really got to touch on. I can't let that not go by. You talked about how, you know, from your life and everything with being learning disabled and things like that. Now, I used to work for the federal government, I used to work for the Social Security Administration. I dealt with interviewing and dealing with people for disability benefits and learning disability. I'm very familiar with all of that. This is what I would say, especially to somebody like yourself. I, whatever it was that they came up with to decide that you had learning disabilities, that's just, we have to be very, very careful how we label folks. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because we have a, and, and, how, and how those labeling can cause a person to adapt what somebody says about them. Right. And, and it's very clear from what I'm listening with you. I don't know what they decided back when you was in school, but I think you might have been mislabeled. That's what I say. Because <laughs> clearly, and there ain't nothing, no. And then God has a way of taking and, and of, of letting us know anyway that he don't need us to be perfect in anything. Nope. So nope. too many of things to confound the that, watch. So that's, that's right. For me and that's, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Too many of us try to be perfect, thinking that we got to be perfect so we, we don't do anything. But God says, I don't need you to do that. I need you to be obedient and allow me to lead and guide you. Mm -hmm. and, and, and and I thank God for that. So that's good for that. And then what else was I thinking about, Arthur? Well, we're probably talking about the music a little bit. In this, well, let me ask you real quick. Do you have any new music coming out or anything like that? I, I don't know. I just wrote a book. So I've been working on that. But I, I'm getting that urge to get back in the studio and um, and and do some recording. And I'd love to do a live worship record or CD, yes. whatever they're calling it now. I don't know. <laughs> They call them, they still call a CD an album. I'm saying, I don't, I know an album. Album is vinyl. I, I know. 33 and, 33 and a third. Yeah. 
RPM. I've been writing now, and it's been another gift that you know that God kind of opened up for me to do. But I, I do have, I, I do have that sense that I, I haven't done anything. I think my last uh, CD was about maybe three years ago, four years ago. Yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm itching to get back in. Well, I know there's one song that you did as a cut where you were featured on there with I can't think of his name, but it's the only one that I got of you that I play on the radio. Oh, Mark um, Chadwick. Yes. Yes. He was the writer of the song. Yeah, he was a good friend. Yes. Of mine. Yes, that was that's a good song. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the only that's the only one I got of you on there. I can't play but that one. Oh, really? I, I don't know how, you know, I'm like I said to you before, like I'm technically challenged. I got to learn how to put all of that stuff, you know, put You'll all learn. That stuff there you, and, and you, you, know. you will learn. Get around and get around a three year old. I know. Right. I know. I know. <laughs> I'll well, tell, tell, tell you what we're going to do. We're going to talk about that book in the second um, segment, because I know that's going to be something that we're going to delve into. I know you got a lot of information to talk about that. But let's talk about real quick, fast and hurry, your ministry, because um, I, I, I note that you are Pastor Karen Orlando and you do. Tell us about your, your ministry. For um, a lot of time that we have, we got about two minutes. OK, um, well, you know, it, it's funny. People call me pastor and, you know, like I don't have like a formal church, you, you know, I, but what happened was 13 years ago when I started to speak, I was speaking in a in a in a coffee house. And, you know, it was just it was never it was never intended to build a church. Yeah. Never. And I was just preaching the gospel. And then as I got in, you know, it was different from being an evangelist. And then I was in front of people, the same people every week. And you get involved in their lives and you start to, you know, love on them and they talk to you and you visit them in the hospital and you marry people and, you know, and you have funerals and you do all that. And, and it was funny because people started calling me pastor. That's a title. That's a title I never gave myself. <laughs> I never gave it. I never, you know, people are like, you start in the church. I'm like, not really. I'm just, and I, and I found myself because then I got in the whole argument, you know, women can't be pastors and they can't teach oh, and they can't. Yeah. I'm like, listen, dude, I don't know what you want from me. I, I just <laughs> was doing what God told me. I got in so much trouble for just doing what God told me to do. You know, God gave me a platform. I opened up my mouth. I was obedient. I was doing what the word, the word says, go visit people in the hospital, pray for people. Counsel That's right. That's right. Encourage people. And people started calling me pastor. If yeah. you know, I never introduced myself as pastor Karen Orlando. I, don't <laughs> I care about function, you know, and my whole life, yeah. I just had an unction to function. An unction to, to function. Just to do, by the way, unction. I wanted to write that in my book, and it's not a real word, but that's I don't, you know. I, I just, I just got this, 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 this desire to do what my God has called me to do, and I think when you do the work, it's the work that brings the title. That's right. That's right. That, that Well, Jesus Christ said, you shall know me. If you don't know me by, if you're not believing me and who I am, believe me for my very works, because they speak right. of me. Right. So I'll right. tell you what, we're going to be, we're going to close this up. We're coming back with part two because we're going to get into some stuff and talk about your book. This could go to part two, three, four. Yeah. Uh, we do this a weekly so day. We're, yeah, we could. We, you know what? Don't, I'll talk to you about this in a second. But I'll tell you what, guys, this is um, Kingdom Purpose TV. And this is uh, Conversations with Gospel Music Recording Arts. We're going to change that title real soon. Uh, I'm your host, Brother Servant Leader Arthur Weathersby. Today's guest has been Karen Orlando. And we're going to pick up again when we do. But before we, I, ooh, did I, oh my God, I got to turn the phone back on because I turned it off because I didn't want it to go off in the midst of what we were doing. I hope I can pull it up. Uh, before I have to uh, giddy up on out of here, because I got a closeout that I use that somebody did for me. Um, she's my, what I call a, I got quasi daughters and stuff like that because mm -hmm. I don't have, she's not my daughter, but she called me her quasi dad. So I said, well, I'm your quasi dad and you're my quasi daughter. Mm -hmm. And she's a national gospel re recording artist. Her name is Renelia. She has an EP out that's called The Message that was released on August the 19th great songs and she did another song with another one of my quasi daughters by the name of stephanie slayball i gotta get you hooked up with her she that child is something uh great credible t both of them have incredible testimony but stephanie I, I, yeah i see i feel a kindred spirit with that 
Um, but yeah, uh, hopefully I can pull this up real quick. Well, I'll tell you what, I can't do it. So I better get up out of here because my boss going to be real mad at me. Well, no, not my, not my real boss. <laughs> Jesus is my boss. So Arthur, here we go. We better get this out of here and do it right now. Do it right now. We're done. Bye-bye.